We're here celebrating tonight the 300th birthday of the place that we call home, Hopkinton, Massachusetts. Incorporated as a town on December 13, 1715, our forefathers soon realized the need for town government and they had their first town meeting in March of 1724. Over the years, Hopkinton has been the birthplace or hometown to many historical figures. John Eliot was a Puritan missionary who lived in town before it was a town. Shays, Chamberlain, Claflin, Walker, Ryan, and Brown, these aren't just names on street signs, but they're a part of our history. Our past includes governors and congressmen, entrepreneurs and industrialists, athletes, and war heroes. Some may be surprised to find out that Edward Hopkins, the man for which our town was named, was never actually living here. In fact, the land that later became Hopkinton was purchased using money he left for Harvard upon his death. In honor of his gift, the trustees later named the town after him, and our beloved parcel became known as Hopkinton. Welcome to HCAM News Focus, Tom Nappy at the anchor desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News Focus, we take a further look at the 300th anniversary opening weekend ceremonies and revisit all the festivities from the kickoff of the Tercentennial Celebration. We start off with a look at the 300th Anniversary Program Guide, which was mailed out to all Hopkinton residents. Kathleen Culler has the story. Town employees and volunteers for Hopkinton's 300th Anniversary Celebration Committee got their first look at the program book this week during an informal gathering at Town Hall. The volunteers and residents took a minute to relax and share a few laughs as they read about the programs planned for the year. Approximately 5,600 program books went to the post office for delivery to all town residents. Members of the 300th Anniversary Celebration Committee are enthusiastic about the book and the year they have planned. This is a roadmap of the events for the celebration year, and we've really gone to a lot of effort to, to make events for everyone, for families, for people interested in history. There are sporting events, parades, there's everything in here. And we want you to treasure this book, to look at it frequently, and find the event that's right for you. Come and join us, help us celebrate Hopkinton's tercentennial. We're also very proud of the quality of the book. Um, we went to a lot of effort to produce something that could be used as a keepsake, and we'd like to thank our sponsors for making that possible. And uh, Jean, where is this going to actually end up? I'm sure this will be the first thing we put in our time capsule. After 2015, the book will serve as an historical record in town. It will also be kept with the town records in the library and in the historical society and the town hall. At the center of the publication is the calendar of events. The calendar begins with the Tercentennial's kickoff event on January 23rd. After a lot of hard work, volunteers will be ready to celebrate too. Which event are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting for HCAM News, I'm Kathleen Culler. Hopkinton's 300th Anniversary Committee hosted the opening ceremonies to the Tercentennial Celebration at the Hopkinton High School Auditorium, and the event featured many guest speakers. Many gathered for the opening ceremony to celebrate Hopkinton's 300th anniversary. There were many speakers during the evening, including Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, who praised Hopkinton for many different things, including the school system and the Boston Marathon. It's really remarkable, right, 300 years. And when you think about those that settled in the land here those many years ago, uh, you wonder what they expected to, to have here in the future. And certainly uh, you can't possibly envision that many years and think about what has come to be here in this great community. But certainly you have many things to be proud of, just simple things that take a whole lot of thought and concentration are making sure that your schools are great. You have made the mark and we are very proud as officials here to celebrate the great learning that you provide to all of the students that come through the halls of these schools and may you continue that tradition to give every student the best opportunity they have to succeed in life. When you think of the Boston Marathon and what a tradition that has become here in our Commonwealth, 
Despite the tragic day that occurred, we are united, we are strong, Boston strong, Hopkinton strong, Commonwealth strong, and forever strong and resilient in the face of adversity that that day br did bring to all of us. But for you to be able to go forward as the beginning of that great marathon with so many families and individuals assemble to achieve a milestone in their own personal life and for a cause that they might be running for is really special. And that is a tradition that you only hold and embrace. So I expect the next 300 years will bring many more marathons to Hopkinton. Board of Selectmen Chair Todd Sestari talked a bit about Hopkinton's past. Our past includes governors and congressmen, entrepreneurs and industrialists, athletes and war heroes. Some may be surprised to find out that Edward Hopkins, the man for which our town was named, was never actually living here. In fact, the land that later became Hopkinton was purchased using money he left for Harvard upon his death. In honor of his gift, the trustees later named the town after him, and our beloved parcel became known as Hopkinton. The economy of Hopkinton has been spurred in waves through the years via agriculture, industrialism, tourism, and industry. At one point, people came from around the world for the mineral springs and hotel to experience the healing powers of our natural mineral springs. Highlights of our industrial past include being the world's leading boot and shoe manufacturer in the middle of the 19th century. At the time, Hopkinton was home to 11 factories producing boots and shoes using technologies developed right here in Hopkinton. Hopkinton was also home to the nation's second cotton mill. Senator Karen Spilka praised Hopkinton for their progress in technology and for the environmental friendliness of the town. In 1915, Francis Safford wrote a brief history of Hopkinton for the town's bicentennial ce celebration. She ended with saying, great changes have taken place in the last century, but even greater ones will be recorded by the pen that writes the history of Hopkinton's 300th anniversary. So here we are a century later at our town's 300th celebration and there definitely have been a lot of changes. Hopkinton has a long history of economic innovation. You heard some of that history of a long time ago with the factories and all that Hopkinton did uh, the early days as a center of shoe manufacturing to our town's current state as what I think we would all recognize as a world-class technology hub. It's really been phenomenal growth here. We are a green community prioritizing energy efficiency and sustainability to support economic growth and pr promote a healthier town and a healthier environment. Also at the opening ceremony, Hopkinton's oldest resident, 103-year-old Sterling Hager, was honored. State Representative Carolyn Dykema was one of many to praise Hopkinton's oldest resident, 103-year-old Sterling Hager. Mr. Hager, it's, it's an honor to be here again. I was really pleased to, I think it was two years ago, to be able to celebrate Mr. Hager's 101st birthday, I believe, with him at the Senior Center. And I cannot imagine a uh, hundred years of life and what you have seen. <coughs> But I do know that Mr. Hager has some wonderful stories that he is freely sharing with others. And I think as we celebrate the 300th anniversary, those stories are so, so important for the town to remember and to acknowledge and to acknowledge um, individuals like you, Mr. Hager, who have given so much to this community and done so much to shape what Hopkinton is today. So it's really my honor and privilege to be able to recognize you with a uh, House of Representatives citation to honor your um, recognition tonight. And I also want to say a special recognition to Mr. Hager. He and I share a birthday, so it's a particularly special opportunity for me to recognize him today. Mr. Hager spoke after being honored. There are many gatherings where I can't tell what they're saying because I am partially deaf and wholly blind. I just want to say a few words. Uh, this is not the small informal gathering I expected to have at the Senior Center, but I will excuse you. And I also would like to have you 
give a, 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 a clap for my daughter who had to put me together piece by piece. <laughs> The only other thing that I would like to mention is that if you're like I am, you do get discouraged with the news that we get from all around the world of things that are not pleasant. But I, I, I want to tell you that because I have seen so many good things happen uh, in this uh, country, that if you live as long as I do, you will see some good things happen, I can assure you. Chair of the 300th Anniversary Committee, Gene Birchman, presented Sterling Hager with the Boston Post Kane Award. The Boston Post Kane Award is a tradition dating back to 1909, and it was started as a publicity campaign by the Boston Post newspaper. At one time considered the nation's leading standard size newspaper in circulation, the Boston Post eventually went out of business in 1957. However, in many of the 700 towns which received the canes, the tradition has survived. We are honored tonight to present this, the Boston Post cane to Mr. Sterling Hager, who has recently celebrated his 103rd birthday. As part of the 300th anniversary celebration kickoff weekend, the library celebrated its 120th birthday. A great turnout was on hand for the event, including a very well-known former employee of the library. The Hopkinton Library enjoyed cake, music by Fuse, and also cupcake decorating and a magician for the kids as they celebrated their 120th birthday. A timeline was on display of the library history. In 1867, the first library is established by the YMCA. And then in 1894, Sarah Witten donates land where the library stands today. In 1896, the first librarian was hired, Sadie B. Stewart. And a year before that, in 1895, the library was built with donations from residents. In 1901, Miss F. Thompson and Mr. Abram Crooks donate the grandfather clock, which stands in the library today. In 1910, Emily Polson, children's author, begins a reading club for children. In 1958, the lecture hall becomes the children's room and is remodeled by the Kiwanis Club. In 1967, the new expanded area is dedicated as the Betty Strong Reading Room. In 2000, Mr. Bernard McGovern, establishes a trust fund of $71,000 for the library in 1940, which grows to $1 million in 2000. In 2003, the library card catalog transitions to the electronic system. And now on this day in 2015, the library celebrated their 120th birthday. Director Ronak Hussein talked about the event. Um, we work with the 300th anniversary to coincide with their opening weekend this weekend. Uh, as you know, there's a town-wide celebration going on as a kickoff weekend. So uh, we decided to do celebrate the library's 120th birthday on this this weekend. Um, so it's, it's pretty historical. You know, 120 years we've been in this building. And then in about next couple of years, um, we're hoping to be in a new building. So this year is absolutely a very, very significant year and a birthday celebration for us. Excellent. Well, this must uh, certainly be an exciting time. Uh, 120 years, it's quite a milestone. Absolutely. Yes, it is. And then we're moving on to the next chapter, so we're very excited. Longtime adult services librarian and now Seattle resident, Susan Marshall was in attendance to celebrate the library's 120th birthday. Seattle area is really wonderful, it's beautiful, it has so many great things going for it. And I've already joined one of the friends groups at one library and I've gone to another library and I got to sign up to be a volunteer, yay. 
But um, the sad thing is, is that I can go to the library, I can check in my books before I go into the library, I can go over to a special place and pick up a hole that I've made off of a shelf with my name on it. I go back to a place and check them out all by myself and get my slip and walk out and I have never talked to a person. Now to me that is so sad. And that's what I miss about this library, because this library really puts the heart into a library, and it is the heart of the community, whereas those libraries are thriving and they provide wonderful resources, but I don't feel the heart. And so I'm so glad to be here for the celebration of the library. And that's why I came, because I saw they were celebrating, uh, the library celebrating 120 years, and it was worth my trip back here to see it, and it's wonderful to see everybody. <laughs> and I got to ask this because you have ties to both communities now. Who are you going oh. for in the Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I have to say that I uh, cheered for the Seahawks when they're playing their playoff games because obviously we're in two different leagues. And uh, uh, But now that they're playing each other, I will be for the Patriots, but then I can go back to cheering for the Seahawks for every other time. <laughs> Without guilt. <laughs> And when you came back here, did it feel like home again? It really did. It was, it's just wonderful. And I, you know, it just, I wish I could bottle all of my wonderful conversations and everything so that when on, on a dreary day when I haven't had anybody to talk to, I could just open a little bottle and say, come out and yay, I'm happy again, you know. And so I talk the ears off of the kids at the bus stop because I just don't have very many people to talk to. <laughs> I also caught up with Beth Mezit of the Friends of the Hopkinton Public Library as she talked about some events and fundraisers coming up as the library moves towards rebuilding. President of the Friends of the Library, Beth Mezit, talked about some of the programs going on and items for sale the Friends had at Hopkinton Library's 120th birthday. I'm representing the Friends of the Library here today. We're a group that uh, earns money with fundraising so that we can help support the library with uh, things that are not in their budget, such as the copy machine lease, the uh, museum passes, um, perhaps a new piece of furniture or shelving or something of that sort. Then um, uh, we're able to help the library get those things on an as-needed basis. Some of the things that we're doing here today is that we're, we're selling these little wooden buildings and signs and uh, a police car and so on and so forth that were given to friends by the Country Plus store across the street. They apparently had ordered a great number of them and found that, that um, they had them in their inventory and they passed them along to us to sell as a fundraiser, which was very generous of them. In addition to that, we have our... Um, uh, the Uncommon Common, which is a book by James Ward. He's a gentleman who lived here in Hopkinton until very recently, and he wrote a book about the houses that surround the town common. It's absolutely fascinating. There are a lot of beautiful homes, which I'm sure everybody has noticed, but he was able to research the homes, the families, the fortunes that allowed people to build those homes, and then he followed the fortunes as those families moved on out to other parts of the Boston area. So a very interesting reading and a very relevant book as far as the history of the town is concerned. But we have those for sale and the Historical Society is also selling those on his behalf. Some of the other things that we have here on the table are a, um, a, a notice about the CSA Long Life Farm. Laura Davis, who runs the CSA, very generously donated a bi-weekly share to the Friends of the Library so that we could have a drawing for it as a fundraiser. We are suggesting a donation of $10 or $25 for three entries, but we will be doing a drawing in March for the bi-weekly share. What that share is, is a, a, every other week a lovely bag full of vegetables and herbs from Long Life Farm, organically grown, for a family or a group here in Hopkinton to enjoy. Another item on the table is a notice about our marathon runner. We have a lovely lady named Talia LaPointe who is running on behalf of Friends and will be fundraising for it. She was a friend of last year's runner, Sally Stuckels, and is um, really enjoying her training. She enjoys running in the marathon and she is very generously going to be fundraising on our website with the PayPal button. The uh, last item that we have on here is uh, wine charms that our group made up 
as uh, that make a very nice little hostess gift or something. We've had those for a fundraiser over a number of years. Because we've had them a number of years, we're selling those at a discounted price, but we do have those. Lastly, I wanted to point out our list of programs that we have for this winter. On February 25th, we're going to have a discussion of The Common Uncommon, the book by James Ward, and would invite people to come join us at 7 o'clock on the evening of the 25th for that event. On March 25th, Chuck Joseph, who's our local historian and a great lecturer, is going to talk to us about some aspect of Hawkenden history. We're not quite sure of the topic on that one yet, but he's always very entertaining in his presentations. On April 29th, William Martin is going to be coming to discuss his new book, The Lincoln Letter. Uh, William Martin is the author of such books as Cape Cod, Harvard Yard, Back Bay, and has written a lot of um, uh, historical novels about this area. And his newest one is called The Lincoln Letter, and he'll be talking about that on April 29th. May 20th, we have Hank Philippi Ryan coming to talk about her mysteries. As you may know, she's an investigative reporter on television here in Boston, but she has written a series of um, mystery books, and she'll come talk about those. All of the events, as I said, are on a Wednesday. All of them are at 7 o'clock in the evening, and we hope you can come join us for those. The Hopkinton Center for the Arts capped off the kickoff weekend with a photography contest. All photos entered had to be related to Hopkinton. Artistic Director Chris Waldman and 300th Anniversary Committee Volunteer Ann Matina spoke with Kelsey Simonson about the event leading up to an announcement of the results. Hi, I'm Chris Waldman from the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. We're here at the 300th Anniversary Celebration uh, Photography Show. And um, we were invited by the 300th Anniversary Committee to participate in this show. Um, the kickoff weekend is this one, and so we are just getting ready to have our opening reception right now. Um, this is a photography show where we invited everybody who wanted to participate to do so. So it's uh, professional photographers, some people who have never entered a, an art show, um, some people who found some amazing photographs in their attic, um, and just all sorts of memorabilia and beautiful things to celebrate Hopkinson's anniversary. Um, we did ask two judges to take a look at the artwork and judge for prizes, which I will be announcing later. And um, in the meantime, it's just kind of a fun exhibit for uh, people to get to know one another and get to know the center that haven't ever been here. Uh, the 300th anniversary invited the HCA to um, sponsor this particular show, um, focusing on the motto of the 300th anniversary based on the past, present, and future of the town. And we've had over 60 submissions for the show and as Chris mentioned, they're from both professional and amateur pho uh, photographers alike as well as fam old family photos have been entered into the exhibit and it's fabulous and we encourage everybody to come on out and see the wonderful photographs that are here. They will be here until February 26th and we are open weekdays from 11 to 5 and if you can't make it during those hours please give me a ring and I'm happy to meet you at some other point and arrange a viewing. Thank you all for coming. I'm Chris Waldman. I'm the Artistic Director of the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Um, we're thrilled to be hosting this show. Um, Ann Matina from the 300th Anniversary Celebration Committee uh, came to us last fall uh, with this wonderful idea of hosting a show here that spoke to Hopkinson's uh, past, present, and future. So we invited um, Hopkintonians and basically anybody who wanted to participate in this show to submit images that um, spoke to this theme. And we got quite a few professional photographers and some amateur photographers, some people who never even used a camera before, some people who went through their attics and found really cool old stuff in there. Um, so I think it's this wonderful combination of things that speaks to Hopkinton. 
Um, I invited two judges, uh, Carolyn Latorell and Lynn Damianos, to judge the show. And um, as you can imagine, it was a challenge because there's such a wonderful variety of work. Um, but they came up with three top prizes, and then they decided that uh, three honorable mentions uh, were worth giving out as well. So here goes. Um, for honorable mention, uh, Steps to Adventure by Anne Newberry. <laughs> On Your Marks by Tom Sloan, which is in the first room. Honorable mention also goes to Goat Farm by Colleen Roy. <laughs> Third prize goes to Family by Kara Karatsa, football player. Thank you very much. Second prize is Autumn Reverie by Gerard Hottleman. First prize is Through the Stone, HCA at Sunset. <laughs> so my name is Tom Sloan, and uh, the uh, piece that I submitted that uh, won was uh, Through the Stone at uh, HCA at Sunset. And it's a picture that I took uh, after a blizzard uh, two years ago. Uh, and I came over to the, to the HCA and, and just took the shot through the, through the stone. Uh, I always liked the uh, the composition and the angles of the stone and how they mirrored the angles of the rooftops. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News Focus. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including all of the upcoming 300th anniversary events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. Thank you for joining us.